Okay, so this video is hopefully going to help you to get started with the investigation. However, it's pretty good. Um, hopefully you'd just be able to read through and follow the instructions because it's very well set out. So thank you for those who, who made this. Um, so yes, please read. Uh, before we get started, what I would like to just remind you of is how you can type these things in using Equation Editor. Um, so I'm just going to go over here, get off the italics. Okay, so hope you've used before, I'm sure you will have. So we go to Insert, Equation. Now if I want to type in a matrix, I'm going to go to the brackets, we'll go to the square brackets, then click on the little box inside and if we now go to matrix um, you can see well we could have just gone straight here if you wanted to um, but now I can um, pop that in and of course you just click on each one and you can fill in um, the numbers that you want. I would then pop in a multiply and again I'm just used to doing this okay so I always go to the brackets first pop in there so to get the two by one uh, obviously just pop that in and then fill in the brackets and away you go later on you have to do an inverse so you can just highlight that press your um, to the power button I guess call it and press that so you've highlighted the whole thing and now you can say to the minus one which will indicate uh, the inverse okay uh, that's probably about it as far as technology goes probably the only irritating thing is you might have to do this over and over again so you might want to do one like that and then we also pop in pop in the bracket right pop in the whole thing and that's your base one and then you can just cut and paste so control c control v you'd probably be better off to even fill in because you'll see later on you might even want to fill in this um, first because we're going to use this one a fair or you will be using this one a fair bit so obviously even from here you could just copy that uh, and oops stick it in okay and and you're off and running and copy and paste copy and paste I'm just wasting way too much time uh, just doing typing which is not great all right so now let's get stuck into the actual task so again, you might have, I would not like to think that you have already read this and then you go, I don't need to listen to the video. That would be the dream. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is, and you've read the task, is that we want to send a code to someone um, so that other sticky beaks might not be able to work out what we're saying. Now we're doing algebra, you know, it could have been used in wartime and whatever to say retreat, attack, or the spy is Fred, you know. Um, so let's just do a quick little converting this algebra and what we would send through it would become this now why would it become this so the first thing you have to do is convert the words algebra into several sets of two by one matrices so we just over here you can see we just split it up into AL, AL, um, GE and so on okay and then we use our encryption code it's a pretty simple code you will make your own one up later on which might include some characters like a space a full stop whatever so here it's just 1 to 26 pretty straightforward um, you could keep it simple when you do yours in part uh, two or three and maybe for some reason change up the order um, and not add in other characters your call anyway so quite straightforward a becomes the one and l is your 12. So we get that and we go through. Now, I would probably like you to, when you're doing this <clears throat> with your setting out, make it nice and clear and maybe have, okay, AL equals 1, 2. And how you do that typing on your um, technology again is obviously this one here, just don't have the bracket. So you'd still have the little square thing and then follow it through. So AL equals and then Obviously, we could go G, E equals. You could have it all on the same line. It's up to you. But make it clear which one is which. So obviously, you go to G. You can see here at 7 and E would be 5. So you write all of those out. Um, you can see here the last pair 
is that you can think about why it becomes 1 1 and you have to actually explain that your good self okay so that's great that's how we get our 2 by 1 matrices but how do we make that become this well we choose a coding matrix okay you could call this the encipher code if you want to the encipher matrix and we are going to pre-multiply each of our two by one matrices by this to get a new two by one matrix okay and when you're again explaining you might want to say why we pre-multiply right think about the order so two by two and a two by one why couldn't we do it the other way and have a two by one by a two by two all right, don't write me an essay on that, but do in fact mention it. So we multiply through and we get this. Okay, we go back to our code over here and we can see clearly that 16 is P. That corresponds with our P here. But why does 27 become A? Well, you probably have already worked it out. We only go from 1 to 26. So then it starts again, right? After 26, the next one, number one, would be A. If it was uh, 30, we would take 26 and we get 4, so that would be D. All right, again, how we write it, go down here, this is all about, you know, you working it out, but I would just take, take away multiples of 26 and you get your answer. So I'll just pop that back and say 27 take 26 is 1, and therefore that gives us a okay uh, so pretty straightforward um, but do write it we have to write it like this and you must include the mod 26 now obviously when you make up your code if you've got more numbers than 26 um, it has to be whatever you do so if you've got say 31 characters well you would have mod 31 and I was a little bit remiss back here you will also make up your own um, enciphering matrix in this case, it must not be a multiple of two or three because your mod is 26. Um, if you choose one later on that's, I don't know, it's got 28 characters, then don't have um, the, the determinant being a multiple of four or seven. Okay, so just be aware of that. Best to choose one, maybe that's prime. Anyway, so... Yeah, this one was chosen for you. You're going to make your own later on. So you do make sure if you stick with 26 characters, don't have um, a determinant that is a multiple of 2 or 3, 2 or 13. Anyway, carrying on. So you just have to go on. Um, again, I'd like you to make that pretty clear. So if you want to, you can do that one and then you can say that that then equals, oops, what's going on? That then equals. Uh, P A if you so desire right then do the next one get your various ones so make it really clear how algebra became this code so hopefully you see that that is reasonably straightforward so that's great and you could send that off now your buddy your friend in the spy land whatever they would hopefully have uh, or know that that was your code now you wouldn't send it with because then other people could try and decipher it as well so that sort of has to be secret all right now to get the enciphering matrix it's not as simple as just going well i multiplied so we multiplied four to one uh, what was it 112 we multiplied that uh, so let's just call this the enciphering matrix by the first one e times a and we got b so in all the maths in all the matrix algebra that we've done before we could go well we could just times this by e to the minus one times e and we're timesing it in front and therefore to undo everything we could just multiply by the inverse now unfortunately we can't do well we sort of do a little bit of that but it's this oops now it's not wanting to erase anyway it's this here 
that's not necessarily the straight out inverse of this because we use this modulus 26 thing and we change the 16, uh, the 1627 to 161. So we have to go through this little process about how we find the inverse when we're talking about mod 26. Okay, so we didn't want to use the exact same um, enciphering code for you guys. So we've got another one over here and we're just going to go through how we do it. So as with all working out all inverses, we do it the exact same way we would do before. So we find the determinant. Okay, so 5 times 3 minus 2 times 6. Check. 1 over 3. We switch. So I'll just remind you over here, we go 1 over the determinant of A. And then if we've got the matrix A, B, C, D, I mean, you remember this, we switch the A and the D, and then we might write a minus sign in front of the B and the C. So that, everything that we've already done before. Oh, look, it's already here. Silly me. But here comes the change. Again, I feel like I'm just reading this to you. So again, hopefully you've stopped the video by now and you're going, yeah, I can suss this myself. Um, so because we've got our determinant here of three, what we have to do is go and find the reciprocal when we're dealing with modulus 26. So we go back up to this table that we had and we see here that if the determinant is three, the reciprocal modulus will be nine. So that's why we have now replaced this with a nine and we multiply through. Okay, and once again, why have we gone from here to here? Because 27, take 26 is one. When we get minus 54, we just add on uh, lots of 26. So you can, so plus three lots of 26. I like to have a little bit of a game to guess how many uh, lots of, I mean, you can divide it by 26 and add that on, but I like to have that guess to see. Anyway, so we do the same to here. Minus 18, if we add 26, then we get the 8. You might be asking, do you have to include this? Absolutely, because you cannot say the inverse of A um, is, and we should put there as well, mod 26, because we can't say that the inverse of A is this, and then say that that also equals this. So you must put in your mod 26 once you have um, changed that, okay? And then all we have to do is once again is go back and pre-multiply to put it back. So if, if this was your matrix, right, your decoding matrix, yours will not be this, yours will be uh, this one over here. So when you multiply, when you now go 16, 15, 5, 6, and you multiply that by, so PA was actually 16, 1, because your friend would then get that code and revert it back. When you multiply that by 16, 1, we should end up getting, um, oops, getting the original thing that we wanted, okay? Okay, so we get that and now two, so don't be afraid if you get really large values, that's okay. So 261, so we have to take off lots of 26, obviously just go 261 minus 10 times 26, right, and we get one. All right, that there, 261 minus 10 times 26, aka okay, 260, and we get one. And then we're gonna go 246, Minus, try nine lots of, right? So again, how do we get this? Well, you can just say 246 divided by 26, get that factor and away you go. As I said before, I like to have a little bit of a guess. Okay, so we've got that. Because we've done this whole 26 thing, you must pop in mod 26. And now we hopefully go back and what we should have, we know one is A, is 12. G, and I think, yes, that was the original one that we had, 112. So yay, um, or L, sorry. And yep, correct, because that was the original one we had. And you can see that your friend could now decipher um, your message of page, whatever that was, what was it? Right, page zippy. 
they would be able to put that back and show that it was in fact algebra. Okay, so double check, you'll now be able to do that. What you will then go on and do is make up your own message. Okay, come up with something that's at least 12 characters. Don't make it massive because then you'll be there all day just doing the same thing over and over again. All right, and this is where you make a decision. You can make a different alphanumeric code. So you might wish to add in some, um, some of the things that could overcome the limitations like space, comma. I mean, obviously with 12 characters, you're not going to hopefully need commas, full stops and whatever, but you could imagine what it would be like if you had to send a longer message. All right. Um, so yeah, hopefully that goes well.